Hi, everybody. This is Pastor Susan, and welcome to another day of devotions as we're wrapping up our sermon series, Do Unto Others. And as we've said all this time, these five weeks, that part of doing has to come out of being. It is what is in the heart um, that comes out through our actions, because if it doesn't, then it, it truly, we're just, we're just not being authentic. Um, and so I want to read a passage of scripture to us today to get us thinking, and then I'm going to read a passage from my book, The Daily Grind, um, that I hope will reflect this a little bit more. This comes, our reading today comes from Luke chapter uh, 6. This is Jesus' sermon, uh, Luke's version of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. They call it the Sermon on the Plain, but however, wherever it happened, it was Jesus' words, and, and he says in verse 45 of chapter 6, um, the good person out of the treasure of the heart produces good and the evil person out of the evil treasure produces evil for it is out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks it is out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. You want to know what somebody really is, who they are being? Their language often follows what's in their heart. And uh, so I want to read a passage of, script, uh, passage of scripture, a passage from my book um, that's talking about um, how we are and how we act based on what's in the heart. And um, Eric Hoffer says these words. The remarkable thing is that we really love our neighbors as we love ourselves. We do unto others as we do unto ourselves. We hate each other when we hate ourselves. We are tolerant towards others when we tolerate ourselves. We forgive each other's each other when we forgive ourselves. Starts with what's in the heart, out of the abundance of the heart. We act, we speak, we do. Um, and this is what I wrote about that so long ago, <laughs> but it's still it's still there. If I could pick only one thing in life that I most want to accomplish, it would be to grasp for myself and help others fully comprehend that we are precious, beloved children of God. That is the spiritual journey. For only as we come to know who we really are, can we fully experience and share the love of God that is offered to us. Too often in the church, we have focused on what we've been saved from rather than what we are being saved to. We are told that we are sinners who deserve to rot in hell, rather than being told that we are God's children who God loves so passionately, so completely, that the Savior came to show us a better way. And both teachings have far-reaching consequences for our lives. I remember the first time I was told I was a horrible, rotten sinner, bound for hell and damnation. I was a child, and when I heard those words, they reinforced an already emerging self-image that was small, ugly, and beginning to be filled with self-hatred. I began to be frightened of God, and I remember begging God not to let me die before I could become good enough for God's favor. It took a long time to be healed from that perverted image of self and God. In fact, the healing is still taking place, and it's still taking place still taking place. It's easy to fall back into that old way of seeing self. And whenever that happens, life becomes distorted. Effectiveness is stun stunted. Ministry is thwarted. God loves me, not because of who I can become or how I show up in the world, but because of who I am. I am God's child. And guess what? You are too. God loves you. How you show up in the world depends on whether you are getting that fact, whether you have that in your heart. You are a precious, beloved child of God. Never forget that. And when you are tempted, as I am so many times, to disregard that truth and live into something else, Say to yourself, thank you, God. Thank you for your love that reached so deeply that you sent Jesus to show me and show the world 
a better way, a way of living into being in such a way that others and myself and yourself will know God's love. Maybe so. Amen and amen.